Hello and welcome back to Europa Universalis 4 with the Rigar and the Terra, Terra Mariana achievement run. So, we, we are doing really fine. We have a steady income, we expand really nice, we've taken some land from Novgorod, we've taken over the whole of the Livonian order. At this point, my life couldn't be better. We have allied Moscovy, Poland, and Brandenburg, and we are looking forward to maybe ally Sweden. But only temporary, because I want them to break free from Denmark so that I can wage war against them more easily. I do want to take over Bornholm. How much development do I have now? I do have 89 now, so that's kind of bad. Because I can't have more than 200 development to join the Emperor. Or the Empire. But as you can see, there's a lot of development in these lands. And I need to take everything up to stone if I want to join the Empire. Because I need to... Actually, do I just... I could probably change my capital. But I don't want to do that. I could take Slesvig, move my capital over there, and then be an imperial state, but I don't really want to move my capital from Riga. I do like Riga as a province itself. So we'll see if we do that or not. Right now we are preparing nothing really. <laughs> We're going to claim Novgorod. Get our spy back, our diplomat. We're just waiting for the aggressive, aggressive expansion to go down, our truce to expire, hopefully for Sweden to rebel. Okay, so there's a rebellion at Kolm now. You know how I also, I also could take care of this? I'm going to give military access to Moscovy, and they might just march in and crush this rebellion for me. I also could give military access to Poland, for that matter. We can get, could get a second idea, but I do want this technology first. Okay, so as we can see, Muscovy is moving, as is Poland. They are eager to liberate my lands from the Novgorodian, Novgorodian separatists. I don't really... I, I'm really uncomfortable with sitting right now, for some reason. I don't really want to take them... Uh, take... Let them take over my lands, but... Oh well. Sadly, they have not yet crushed them. Conflict between city and archbishopric. The long rivalry between the archbishopric and one of our cities has damaged relations between us for many years. The city is seeking freedom from the authority of Archbishop Friedrich II from Briba, a Bibra and have been unwilling to shelter our archbishops during time of unrest and war. Sooner or later they will come to their senses. We would lose clergy loyalty, but gain burger, uh, burger loyalty, and 50 administrative power. Or we get 10 devotion, enforce our authority, we lose loyalty with the burgers, gain loyalty with the Clergy will lose 10 local uh, autonomy in Ingemaland, but Ingemaland gets plus 5 unrest. I'm going to take the administrative power because I can use that more at the moment. Again, the rebels were successful in Colm. Not a big problem, I think the Polish might just come around and crush them. Or they are going to Ingemaland. I hope for these, <laughs> these separatists to actually move to Neva, but oh well. I'm thinking about just declaring war on Denmark here. Because Lithuania and Poland would follow me. And who are you allied to? Pomerania and Friesland. I don't f fear both of uh, any of them, to be honest. 
But the aggressive expansion is a little bit too high at the moment over here. Okay, so Poland has taken care of the rebels for me now. The naval ambitions is something I want to research. Ferdinand I of Austria has been elected. He has enacted an imperial reform. Archbishop, with the backing of the members of the Holy Roman Empire, the Empire, uh, Emperor has decided to go through with the reform, called for the Reich's reform. This reform has the following effects. They get, uh, the Emperor gets less build cost and less development cost and the members get the same bonus. And give, uh, gives cause, ca a casus belly against non-members holding imperial th territory. So he can uh, wage war against Denmark, I think? No, apparently not. No, yeah, okay, Imperial ban on Denmark, Poland, Burgundy and Venice. And he's probably going to use it against Venice. Bavaria is fairly strong. How's the Empire looking anyway? That's not the Empire. I could, by the way, get something here. Forgive. Usury, send a papal legate, levy church tax. I'm just going to save my points up even further. I don't want to spend them just now. Local fortification expert discovered. It seems as if there is a great man in one of the provinces who has some rather intriguing ideas on how to create better fortifications. However, he is reluctant to leave his hometown. Uh, let him stay home. We get local defensiveness in reveal, uh, Reval for the end of time for the whole game, so that's awesome. I certainly want that. We could get uh, advisors in the other two departments as well, and I think I'm going to do that. How about we get morale of army, land maintenance... Let's get the morale of armies, and we're going to... Oh, tolerant of heretics. Yeah, I thought we had plus one, uh, or minus one... No, wait, I, I don't know what I thought. And the diplomat. We're going to go with the diplomatic reputation and that's going to give us even more points which is awesome and it's not costing us too much I mean it's costing us some but we have still a surplus of money so that's good could also build another uh, infantry regiment which I'm going to do Okay, so Sweden again is rebellious. We're going to put, uh, help them in their desire to break free. And in doing so, hopefully get Neva and Klaxon. Is anyone else backing him? Novgorod is backing him. Well, he's Novgorod would probably want his provinces back, all things considered. So I need to move my armies over here to invade Neva as quickly as possible because Neva is a very important trade center that I do want to have under my control I could just attack him myself but I don't think that Sweden would follow me yes Sweden would go to war against me the clergy now wants a piece of land so let's take a look and what province has a very high tr tax income so that we can give that to the clergy. I think we're going to give Colm to the clergy. I can't, because I need to take it, uh, make it into a state. Which I'm going to do, that's still gonna cost me some money. Why... Okay, why is it... This is in the re uh, area of Estonia, okay, so... That's what this is also Estonia. We have an estate in Estonia, Livonia, Kronia, and Pskow now. Okay. So let's go ahead and give this to the clergy. And we could, I think, maybe convert this now. Now that it's in the hand of the clergy. We accept the Novgorodian culture, at least. And we are supporting. 
Sweden. So let's immediately go and take Nerva and Kexholm. And let's see what's... Oh, we have a little bit more forces than they do. But I am not really interested in fighting this war. Okay, so we can convert Ingemar land now. But it would take forever. So I'm not gonna do it. Uh, how strong is the enemy fleet? Not a actually they are, they are they're quite strong. Thinking about returning my fleet home. The clergy wants even more land. Oh, well, let's give them Ingemar land then. Maybe they can convert that. I don't want to pay for my force at the moment. I don't think we're gonna be invaded by them. Ah, uh, that's a problem. I kind of need to do something to get more participation so that I'm going to get these two provinces. But I also don't want to anger the <laughs> enemy fleet. I don't want to engage them in combat. I mean, most trades, all of the trade ships belong to me, but he has a lot of galleys, which helps him a lot in this, uh, the Baltic Sea at the moment. Can't fight them. You're still protecting trade over here. Yes. If I retreat these ships, then we're going to lose a lot of our influence. And we're going to lose a lot of our income. So first of all, let's move our army over here to Smalkant, as Meland, and we're going to convert both of these provinces because I can now. Oh, we are accepting the culture, that's why. It's uh, easier to convert accepted cultures. So we can convert these two and never worry about rebellions from them. And we're just probably going to take over Norway and cede it to Sweden to get, get the war participation up. And also let's kill the Swedish uh, Norway forces here. Just kill them off quickly. I'm not going to give you my trade power. I'm going to seed a couple of troops here and send them over to the Finnmark and Helgoland. Okay, so we have uh, our king died and we now have a new. We need a new heir. Oh, not our king, but our archbishop. So, we have prestige, we have devotion. I'm going to get this administrative technology. We can now pass the Heretici Com Heretico Comparendo Act. Make it an illegal offense, punishable burning at the stake, to either own or produce a translation of the Holy Bible. This is going to give us national tax modifier and missionary strength. And is going to gain one reform desire for Christianity. Which I don't care about, so let's get that. Okay, so let's see. We could appoint a local noble noble again. Uh, a foreign noble. Oh, foreign noble? That's new. Why don't we get that? Wait, what? I can get a Denmarkish noble on my throne. Another Sylvester. No, let's uh, <laughs> let's not get another Sylvester, okay? A Friedrich is good. He is nice. What happens if uh, Denmark dies now? A noble from the holds of Wittelsbach, okay. Well, because he oh, he's my heir. He's not my king yet. Uh, my my ruler yet. I wonder if I can get a P U with him. I don't think so because I am not a monarchy. 
Are we getting the war? Yeah, we're getting some, so that's good. We're going to start sieging this now. We're also going to use our air. Uh, let's get a military leader. He's very good in combat, but not so good at sieges. We've occupied the Finnmark as well. We're going to besiege this fort at Trondelark. Or we might go for Akasus. Akasus is what? What? At war with Scotland and Sweden. Scottish conquest of Erken. Yeah. At war with Denmark, Norway, Pomerania, and. You are allied with, with France. And you have declared war against Norway. Okay. Uh, non enforcements of ordinary. Ordinances. Monarchs ruled by issuing ordinances ruled, oh, but they were almost po powerless to enforce them. Enforcement depended on the local powers, nobles, city governments, that would not always be vigilant as the monarchs would have desired. We could let them handle it or lose 50 uh, administrative power. I'm just going to let them handle it. I don't want to lose more administrative power than I have to. And I'm going to attack the troops at Jamt land here. And we're not going to besiege them right there, we're just going to stay here. We already have our war participation at least at 10%, so maybe we get at least never Neva. Would be nice. Right now the... <laughs> the French, French forces are besieging everything. <sighs> it's hard to hear the citizens rage against raise taxes from the high, high walls and inside the thick, thick towers of our restored forces. But we do hear them threatening revolt and rebellion unless we lower the taxes. Oh, this is still the, the same thing from the... No. <laughs> we hear and we reluctantly oblige, they get local autonomy, Oh, say what? We can't hear. Say what? We can't hear you! <laughs> uh, we get unrest in Reval and Lettigallen. Let's say we hear and we reluctantly oblige. <laughs> That's uh, a funny event that I've never had before. Why am I losing money? I'm not making as much from trade at the moment. Hey! He took back this province. Uh, it was actually the fort right there that took the province back. Well, he's certainly going to win this war right now. There's no question of... We're just going to take as many provinces that do not <laughs> need me to siege them. Decline of the merchant class. Without the old privileges and pedigrees of other factions, the status and influence of the burghers is rarely quite as secure as that of those born into power. Lately, a combination of financial misfortune and misdirect political ambitions have resulted in a loss of power and influence of the burghers of Riga. They are going to lose 10 influence. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. The good thing is, he can't give these territories back to Novgorod, because I control them. So he can only give them to me, but not to my enemy. But we got another military technology. I think we just unlocked cannons. We did. Cannons are very expensive, so I don't want to build them. The enemy fleet has been destroyed, which is very nice. Why are you not patrolling? I... I it seems like you're not patrolling around here, so... Yeah, go and protect the trade again, please. We're making a little bit more money now, again. Discovered an agent from the Teutonic Order. I don't care and I don't really want to take them over yet. I want to expand in other directions before I turn against Poland. Because they are fairly strong. And I need strong allies if I want to take them. Thus, I'm allying Muscovy and Sweden, because they are the most strongest forces around. Muscovy at the moment is fighting against Kazan. That's good. Let them expand into the east, while I take the west.
Hmm, my war contribution went down by a lot. I haven't really fought or something like that. I should probably cede these lands to to Sweden. That is going to be smart. At least he can take over these provinces then. I don't think that gives me war contribution, sadly. But it's a nice thing to do anyway. When did he take Gotland? I guess he had was stopping a core of Denmark, was liberated from enemy occupation, was annexed by Sweden, but it was never occupied by enemies. I guess he just had to give it back as a as the la in the last peace deal. I guess, even though it's not really stated anywhere. Let's uh, retreat our forces. Peace should be possible now. When why did I when I appointed an heir? Why could I appoint someone from Denmark and not from you know Brandenburg, Muscovy, or maybe Poland? Oh, maybe it was a Pol- no, it's not a Polish, it's a Jagillion here. Don't they have this, uh... Yeah, they have a, an elective monarchy. So they're not going to have a Jagillion forever. Okay. Well, you know at war with Moscovy and... Sweden- uh, with Denmark. No, what? You already broke your lines with Novgorod. Interesting. Well, I would really like it if you make peace now, because I want to take over Novgorod again. Oh, I still have a truth with him. That's bad. So, I can't really stop Muscovy from taking lands this time. Rigorous researchers. Academic institutions are not immune to the corruption, and the profits that can be made by abusing positions of great influence can, can stand in the way of creating a good environment for research. However, Regan scientists are largely above this, focusing on genuine intellectual achievements above titles and financial contributions. The lack of corruption in society allows us to explore and invent without being embedded by selfish interests. The search for knowledge must be valued in itself. We get 40 points in everything. Awesome. I like that very much. Uh, it's somewhat bad that I can't stop Muscovy this time. So they're gonna take over quite a lot of land. You know what, I can probably stop them by t picking... No, I can't, okay. Well, anyway, you can make peace now, Sweden. Norway has nearly been completely occupied by Den uh, Scotland. Oh, Scotland also is at war with Muscovy. Yeah, okay, so Muscovy is now besieging of Godot, which means that I can't stop them this time, sadly. I can just hope that he's not going to take over the whole of Novgorod. Also, why is Sweden not making peace? Denmark has accepted peace. We will cede Orkneya, Hotland, and Farona to Scotland. Because Scotland has got a lot of these islands now. 
Interesting. My army before my die, which is not a bad thing. Uh, we were in a deficit anyway, so let's just not get a new one. For the time being. And let's also hope that maybe Sweden is going to make peace at some point. Okay, so Novgorod already has lost his war very much. They're moving back their forces, but I doubt that he's going to take anything back now. Okay, so Sweden is attacking the forces of our enemies, and he's winning, luckily. How did he take over Calais? He must have war waged war against England. Who are your allies, Burgundy? Just your... Hmm. Okay, well, interesting. There's not much to do for me right now, except wait for this war to end. At least my truce with Novgorod will be over, if Novgorod still exists after this war. Wow, Scotland has sent forces over here. I did not expect that. Okay, so... Awesome. We got three favor with the Sweden. Swedish people. Denmark will grant independence to Sweden. Denmark will cede Skane, Halland and Blacking to Sweden. So these three territories. Denmark will cede Neva to Riga. That's that which I wanted. So I'm really happy about that. He will, Denmark will cede I'll be forced to give 10% of their income each month to pay for, for war reparations. This will last for 10 years. They will pay 88 ducats. I will get 4 of this. And that's awesome. I also suffered some aggressive expansion, but not as much, so I don't really care. And I got Neva as a province now. And it's really cheap to core as well. So now I'm just waiting for Moscovy to make peace. So that I can invade Novgorod again. Denmark now sees me as a rival. As to be expected. Uh, military is divided, we should always attack. Religious resistance. I'm still... Yeah, it's just taking a long time. Okay. Well, it is proving much harder than anticipated to convert the citizens of Ingemarland. Although a few of them showed some clear interests in the beginning, the majority don't seem that willing to embrace a new religion. We get... It wa it's a waste of time. We get minus 10 missionary strength for 5 years, or we increase our efforts and 7 religious regiments are going to rise up against us. Uh, we're just going to crush these rebels real quick. It's going to cost us a little bit of manpower, a little bit of money, but at least we don't waste time. How long will this take anyway? The converting right now. 14 years. Well, hopefully we get some more missionary strength or something. Why is it taking so long? It didn't have to take long before. But can we get an advisor maybe that gives us a little bit of missionary strength? We could. And we're going to get this guy because it's important that we convert these provinces. So now it's not going to take 14 years but only one more year. If at all. That's certainly exactly one year I think. 
Ah, God, okay. Well, that's kind of bad, what he did. So... First of all, I need to send a spy against Novgorod again. But as we see, Moscow has taken over quite a lot of these lands. And also uh, Olonens and Kem, which is bad, because these are lands that I would have liked to have. At least this one. And you know what, this one would have been good as well. The only territory that I can take over now is uh, Ladoga. And our lines will break with Sweden. No, oh, because they consider this their territory. Also, I might be allied to one of his rivals. Indeed, I am. To, well, actually, to two of his rivals. To Brandenburg and Moscovy. But that's good. We don't want uh, Sweden as an ally anyway. I just wanted him free to be to, to wage war against him more easily. So let's uh, send our diplomat over there to get a spy network. And let them break the alliance. Who cares? With Poland on my side, I can easily take over Sweden. Of course, now we will have a truce for five years, but in these five years, I'm going to make a lot of claims. Influenza. Rumors say that sailors came back from a trip sick like hell, and the ones who didn't die on board infested the whole city with their disease. It's time to act before the whole country dies from coughing and cold sweat. Quarantine the port and let them die. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to end the episode here. I thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, then consider leaving a like and a comment down below, and we will see us in the next episode. Until then, take care. Bye.